How are you doing? What you're about to see is this past Wednesday evening's absolute beginner on how to model up a Lego brick inside of Fusion 360. I just forgot to hit the record button, so you're coming in like 10 seconds into the video, but I hope you enjoy. Take care. If you're watching this on a mobile device, I'm sorry. I've kind of split the screen up a little bit here uh, for, for tonight. Um, because what we're gonna be it's kind of like working on is uh, this uh, this Lego block uh, I have here, and um, that's what we're gonna model up. Uh, so we're gonna model up a uh, this Lego block. Take it nice and easy. Um, and I found these dimensions out on out on, on online, so uh, I couldn't really tell you if they're completely true. I found a, a, a Lego piece and I measured it up. Uh, it wasn't the same thickness, uh, but width uh, wise, it probably is actually not too too far off. One of the questions uh, was, is there a web uh, between in here? Um, and I think there is. Uh, we will we will definitely try to, to draw that up. So uh, with this here, uh, we looked at this Lego piece. Um, let's um, let's jump over and create a brand new design. So I'm going to hit the plus sign up here. And that gets me to talk about uh, the couple of changes that I always make um, when, um, when when I start out with Fusion. So if you ever watch some of my live streams, you might wonder uh, up on YouTube, you might wonder how the heck I get um, how, why my screen look different than yours. Here's the here's the two things that that I do. Um, I will move up on the view cube up here with my mouse, and I will right click, and I will change this to uh, perspective with auto faces. Um, that kind of changes the way we are looking uh, at the part. Um, it's really just kind of like changing a different kind of glasses you're wearing. So I'm gonna change that to perspective with auto faces. And then I like to go down here in the bottom where we have some different settings too and go down to this one grid. See how it looks like lines, vertical and a piece. Um, and I normally turn off the grid and the snap to grid. That is the only changes that you will see um, that I will normally do uh, to Fusion uh, when, when I start out. So uh, with that, um, let's, um, let's start modeling up this Lego piece um, that I have. Uh, and again, this drawing here I found online. It's just a picture I snapped. Uh, I'll share that with you if you, if, if you want it. Um, it's, it's pretty... I think it's it's somewhat close to to reality, um, but this actually I'm happy with this because it's gonna get us a chance to uh, to talk about uh, some different modeling technique as we as we're moving along. And I'm gonna try to model up with the screen a little bit. See, so yeah, I kind of like have two windows here. Again, if you're watching on a mobile device, this might be a little tricky, um, but um, <laughs> but hopefully we, you can bear with me. So um, inside of Fusion. Uh, we always start sketching either on a face or on a plane, right? That's like rule number one. It's always, it's always a, a 2D sketch. Uh, we start out with a 2D sketch that is sketched on either a face or a plane, and then that is extruded into, a, into 3D space. That's what we're doing in, in the mod environment all the time. Um, now, on this part here, since we don't have anything on the screen, um, well... We don't have a face, we only have planes. Now you can't see anything right now, but if I go up and click this create sketch icon, you will actually get this origin um, displayed right here. You can also turn that on and off up here on the light bulb if you want to keep it on permanently. Uh, that's really, oops, that's really uh, up to you. Uh, so if I turn the light bulb on, then you will see it stays um, off. You don't see it, but as soon as you click create new sketch, it will um, it will appear. Now, um, I'm gonna go ahead and open up the first sketch, and it doesn't really matter what plane you select. Um, you will see up here that the, these three planes kind of resembles uh, the view cube up here, top, front, right. But it's important to say that there's no rules for this. Uh, there's best practices, <laughs> but there is. Um, there is no rules. Um, so what I'm going to do is I'm going to go and uh, and I'm going to select in this top plane here. 
click on that and you will see that the cursor kind of like goes normal too and now we're in uh in the, the the sketching environment and the reason i know i'm in my sketching environment is because i see this sketch palette over here if you don't see that one over there you're probably not inside of the sketch you will also see we get a little icon down here on the history line um that that says sketch so uh that's the sketch that we're working in um right now now um looking at this model here uh where where should we start well um probably start with a a rectangle right so we have a 15.8 here and a 31.8 here. That's probably uh, a good place to start. So what I'm gonna do is I'm gonna go up here and I'm gonna pick um, the center rectangle. So underneath sketch, rectangle, I'm gonna go to the center rectangle. Um, and I'm gonna left click on that one. And when you do that, look at next to my cursor. You can actually see uh, you know, how uh, it changes to say place uh, center point. And that is the you know, where are we gonna start that rectangle? And I'm gonna let it snap right into, uh, you can see here I'm hovering over uh, this origin here that it switches from a crosshair, look at my mouse, crosshair, I hover over the origin and turns to a, a, a square. That will tell me that that first get entity is gonna be connected and nailed into the origin. So I'm just gonna left click once, and as I'm dragging out here, you will see that I get a, um, I get that rectangle. And you will also see that on the on the left side and at the bottom of it, there is uh, kind of like dimension dialogue. So here we have an opportunity um, to place the first set uh, of dimensions. And um, in this case, I am going to, uh, you can see that the, the 46 to the left there is highlighted. So we can put in that 15.8 that we saw over on the, on the drawing to the left there. So 15.8 type that in and you will see that the, the, the rectangle kind of adjusts to it. Now, if I wanna move that down to the bottom, I can actually hit the tab key uh, right on your keyboard. So if you hit the tab key, you will see that the 15.8 is now locked in place and we're down in the, the length of it. And then I'm gonna type in that 31.8. And uh, then I can hit enter and you will see that uh, we kind of have the rectangle here. Now, I can um, I can zoom in by roll, scrolling the middle mouse button on my mouse. That will let me scroll in. And if you're brand new, this whole scrolling in and out, it's gonna take a little bit to get used to, but you'll get a hang of it. Uh, so now we kind of have this done here, and I'm actually ready with this 2D sketch uh, because it's black, and I'm gonna come back to that in a little bit. Uh, but because it's black, we're ready to extrude this into 3D space. Uh, now, of course, it's important to know how far we want to extrude it. So I'm going to look over here again on the drawing, and there isn't a height here of 9.6. Again, if you're on a mobile device, I apologize if this is hard to see. Uh, 9.6 is, um, is, the, is the height we're going to do here. So to do that, I'm actually going to use a shortcut key, and I'm a big fan, even if you're brand new inside of Fusion, I'm a big fan of kind of like learning some of these shortcut keys. This one here is Q. Uh, that will give us a a, um, a feature called press pull. It actually also have an icon up here, uh, press pull. But Q uh, is, the, is, the, is the command. So I'm gonna click on that. And as soon as I do that, you will see that kind of like our sketch moves into a, a 3D view. Um, and if it doesn't turn, then it's probably because you didn't do the first step where we right clicked up here and change that to perspective with auto faces. Now, you will also see we get a menu here that says press pull. And uh, I can click inside of this one and then you get a, uh, it will turn blue and you get an arrow and this dialog box kind of changes. Now, anytime I see an arrow, <laughs> I got a pull in it. So um, make it that I have it. And uh, just infusion. Um, so I see that arrow right there. I'm gonna hover over and you see my, my cursor changes into a hand. I'm gonna left and hold down my left mouse button and I can kind of drag that up there, right? So you can see how I can drag that. And actually you will see right next to it, there's like a dimension box that is kind of following it. And that is also following over here. So if I'm dragging that up and down, you will see that that, that will kind of change that. 
Um, now I'm going to use that 9.6 as the height. So since this is blue, we can type it into it. So I'm going to 9.6 uh, and hit enter. And that will uh, give me that uh, first block for, uh, for this Lego piece. And you will actually see that now we have a sketch down here. And we have a, that extrude or that Q feature in here. Now, again, if you want to zoom in a little bit, we can just uh, scroll the middle mouse button. We can zoom in, scroll to the other direction. We're zooming, we're zooming out, and you will see. Depending on where you're holding the cursor when you do it, it kind of works in uh, perspective to that. Again, if you're brand new, just work around uh, with this a little bit, and you will get more comfortable with it. Now, if we were going to go back in and edit that first sketch the one with the dimensions we put in the 15.8 and uh, the 31.8 uh, then we will go down here to the bottom where this history tree is and we will right click on that sketch and then we can click edit sketch and that will take us right back into where we were when we drew up that uh, that rectangle now to get out of this i can just hit stop sketch down here and we're back into where we were before now, if we want to come back in and edit that thickness we gave the block, well, then we're going to go over to the feature here, and we're going to right-click on that, and we're going to say Edit Feature, and then we're back into where we could drag uh, in the handle. And that really much, this is really how it goes um, all the way from uh, through these, through these uh, different ones. Now, if you want to spin the model around, um, then instead of scrolling on the middle mouse button, um, you uh, you can actually, well, first of all, let me just say, if you hold down the middle mouse button and move, then you pan. So that's kind of like panning around the screen. So scrolling in and out, will zoom in and out, holding down the middle mouse button will pan it, so you can kind of like move it around. So if you scroll, you suddenly was out in space, you would always hold down the middle mouse button, kind of like, move it back and get it placed where you want. If you hold down the shift command on your keyboard, so holding out shift, and then the middle mouse button, so before what was pan, now you will see that you can kind of like spin uh, this model around. So that's kind of like the, the, the three commands you need to know. Scrolling the middle mouse button will zoom in and out. Holding the middle mouse button down will pan it. And then holding down the shift on your keyboard and the middle mouse button will let you pan around. Again, if you're brand new to Fusion, this takes a little bit to get used to, but you'll, uh, you'll get a hang of it. Now, so we created what is called a 2D sketch, and, um, and then we, we extruded that with the Q command. It's important to know that uh, just like we went into the sketch before to find this uh, center rectangle, there is also a lot of other commands if we uh, if we play inside of these two other uh, two other ones in here. And I just wanted to show you a couple of, of tips as we are going going through modeling up this uh, this Lego box. So um, I maybe go a little bit slower, but I want to make sure that you you kind of see that there's different ways to somewhat get to uh, to the same result. So what I could do. If I wanted to hollow out the bottom of this Lego piece, right? Like if we're looking in on back on this model here, we kind of like have a hollow section. Go back, you can flip between the tabs up here. So to get to that bottom section, I could hold down the shift key, middle mouse button, I could kind of spin it around. And I know that I'm on the back side because this one now up here uh, indicates that we, um, that we are um, on the bottom here. So I uh, hope that that is, uh, that is useful. Uh, now, so one way we could do this was we could um, actually draw up a rectangle, uh, just like we did before, center rectangle, and you will see that the wall thickness of this block uh, is supposed to be 1.2. See that right here. Uh, and I'm, I'm expecting that to be unified uh, both on the walls and uh, kind of like on the bottom. So one thing we could do is we can go up and create a new sketch and now we can click on that back face. See, before we didn't have anything to click on, so we had to pick a plane. But now we actually have that back face. So I'm going to select on that. And again, it will go normal to that. And you can see we are looking at the bottom here. And I could repeat what we, uh, what we did before. Um, I could go up and click Sketch and click a rectangle. Select a two-point, uh, center rectangle again. 
and do the exact same thing again click here and draw this one out but this time I'm actually not going to type in the dimensions I'm just gonna kind of click out here in space and not bother too much about the dimensions and click on that and when I do that um, then you will see that no dimensions are placed uh, but uh, and, and but it's blue it's not black like it was before now that means underdefined and what underdefined means inside of fusion is that the geometry can move now look at my cursor again you will see that my, my part is actually ready to place rectangle it will stay in the mode of creating uh, rectangles now if you ever want to get out of that you can just hit uh, escape on your keyboard and if you look at my mouse you will see my mouse goes back to be just a, a single uh, white mouse uh, here now um, so what I mean by underdefined is that if I go in and grab this corner and start holding down my metal mouse button my left mouse button and dragging I can actually move uh, this rectangle uh, back and forth and that's not what we want we always want to make sure we we lock this down um, to lock this down we are going to use dimensions just like we did when we placed the first one um, but this time um, we're actually going to evoke the mesh the dimension tool and you can do that by hitting D on your keyboard so D for dimension or D for Dennis and you will see that how my cursor changes to be kind of like having a little measuring tool next to it now if I go up and I click on this line it will actually give me the overall length of that line but then if I click on another line on this edge, then it will actually show us uh, that dimension. So now I could type in that uh, 1.2 we have here, 1.2, and hit enter. And you will see that, and it may be a little bit hard to see, but you will see that now this line is black. And, and these two lines have now been fully defined to be that 1.2. But this line over here is still blue, it's still underdefined. And if I just go out of the measuring tool again by hitting the escape my keyboard and I drag this corner, you'll see I can't move it up and down, but I can surely move it, uh, move it sideways. So now I could do the exact same thing again. I could hit D for dimension, click on this line, click on this line, and I could place another dimension here that is 1.2. And now you will see that that box is black what means that now it's ready to be extrude and we have now made sure we got a unified uh, wall right here now before I get out of this sketch um, to extrude I'm just gonna get out of the measuring command again look at my cursor and you can see that I have a, the, the, the dimension tool if I hit uh, escape I'm back out of here I'm just gonna clean out these rectangle boxes I did so the way you can do that is you can just Hold down your left mouse button, you can drag uh, kind of like a, uh, a box around them and they all get highlighted. And then you just hit delete on your keyboard. You should be able to, there you go. And then now they're like, now they're like gone. You can clean that up. So now we have this box here. Now, if I hit Q again, just like we did before, you will see that the box kind of like spins around. Now we're still looking at the bottom. I can select inside of here and before, uh, we pulled in the arrow we saw that we made a solid and if I hold down shift the middle mouse button you can see we can do the same thing we can kind of drag it out a solid but if I go the other way then it turns red and that actually means that now this is uh, a cut now before we did 9.6 point, uh, point uh, for the overall depth but I still want to maintain this same th wall thickness all the way around you can actually in here type um, and you can actually make, um, you can do math in here. So what I can do is I can actually say that I want to do a minus and then uh, if you got to do any kind of calculations, just like in, in the real world, you probably want to do some kind of like a bracket. I can say minus and then we type in that 9.6 minus that 1.2 bracket and uh, and it will actually do that uh, math right for you that's one way uh, you can do this 
I'm going to show you another way uh, a little bit later. But I'm going to hit end up, okay, uh, end it to this, and we now have uh, kind of like created that wall thickness. There's also another command in here uh, that uh, is called the shell command that could also uh, be used for this. But just in this case here, uh, I'm going to wait that for, for another day. There's all the live streams <laughs> on the shell command. But I just want to make sure you saw that. Now, if you look down the history tree now, um, we had the first sketch. If I right click and hit edit sketch, that was our very first sketch here of the block, right? And then uh, we extruded that uh, 9.6, okay, with that. And then we sketched that uh, rectangle. We made sure there was had that wall thickness. And then we just did that last cut uh, into there uh, with that math in there. So no, you can do that math. I could also just drag the handle. But now we can actually add that uh, math in there. Okay, so uh, so now we kind of like made this um, zoom middle mouse button, shift and middle mouse button holding down. We can spin around almost like we made like I don't know, like a, a box we could <laughs> plant some plants in. Uh, now let's um, go over back to the top up here. Um, so we can kind of see the top and let's um, start looking at uh, the, the, the top bosses that we have to uh, to put in here. I want to show you a couple of, of, of different ways we can kind of handle this. Um, so we're going to start out and we're going to use these drawings here to kind of like um, control where we're we placing things. So if you're looking at this drawing over here and again, if you're a mobile device, I'm sorry, uh, but we have it, the dimensions comes from the edge. Um, and I will normally, whenever I get a drawing from a customer, I will normally try to draw my things following their drawing. Um, even though that, uh, I maybe choose to, uh, it would be easier to maybe do some symmetry and things like that. I have always used whatever the customer drawings dimensions they gave me. I've always used that because the customer will send you a change later on. And, um, and if you don't, um, if, if you, when you get that change from people, um, well, it's so easy to kind of get stuck in a, in a place where, um, you know, if you try to do it your own way with symmetry and things like that, you suddenly are struggling because, you know, they change the dimensions. So I always use these dimensions on the drawing um, as my reference. So to do uh, the first circle, I'm going to, again, open a new sketch. So you see this kind of like repeats this pattern. Create a new sketch. Again, we're going to select the face. I'm going to select the top face here. And it kind of is going to go normal too. And then I'm going to draw my first circle. Now to draw a circle, I use the shortcut key C. C for circle. And you'll see my cursor. I get a little, uh, I get a little, little circle there. And I'm just going to place one circle here. Draw, click left once and you get the diameter. Click uh, left second time and we kind of had that circle there again that circle is blue means under the fine now again i'm ready to draw another circle but in this case here i'm just gonna uh, hit escape for a second um so over here we're gonna play some dimensions so 3.9 from the edge so uh, let's do that d for dimension from this edge to this edge so that is 3.9 um, and then there's also another drawing down, another dimension down here, um, 3.9. So I'm going to select that. Now I'm going to select it to here. I'm going to do it up here, of course. But I'm maintaining uh, maybe not the same edges, but at least the same dimensions. And then if you look here, you'll see we get the diameter of this one. And that uh, is uh, 4.8. And now you will see that this turns black. Uh, what means that that is now ready to be fully defined. If you see it's blue, you gotta stop because then something is probably not right. Now we could go ahead and we could start drawing uh, the rest of the holes in here uh, because we can see that they are probably like all of them is eight millimeters apart in, in, in both directions. Um, but I want to introduce you to uh, the pattern command and I want to show you to you in two different places in this exercise. Uh, one, um, is actually in uh, the sketch command in here. Um, you can um, you can go into the sketch command and you can do a rectangular pattern right here, 
or as I'm going to show you a little bit later, um, you can also go into the create pattern and do a rectangular pattern in there. The two are a little bit different. One are going to be doing the sketch. So that's what we're drawing inside of these. The other one's actually going to be doing a kind of like the features or the faces as you see in here. So let's start out with um, the rectangular pattern. I'm going to click on rectangular pattern. And uh, whenever you get these menus, just start from the top and just kind of work your way down, uh, down through them. You know, it gets a little overwhelming in the beginning, especially if you're a brand new user. Um, but I really believe that if you just start from the top, work your way down, then, uh, then you're going to be fine. So the first thing it's asking for is the object, and that is that circle. So we're going to, uh, you know, just click here and go over and click on the circle there. And as soon as we do that, a couple of things kind of get, uh, comes alive. Again, you'll see we get arrows, and I always pull in arrows whenever I kind of see arrows. And we can see that some things are happening uh, on this model. Uh, now, it's looking for some directions. But that's actually kind of like what we what we have picked uh, on here, you get two options. You get extent or spacing. I actually prefer spacing because that's between uh, each one of them and that's actually what we need kind of here. Uh, the quantities, so you will see there's two quantities and that's because there is a row this way and there's a row this way. Right now, the first one is actually the, the horizontal row. Uh, so we need four, right? One, two, three, four. So I'm going to type in four, and you will see that now we get four. And that's perfect. Uh, then we get a distance, and uh, in our drawing over here, it says eight. So uh, we're going to change this from seven to eight. And that actually takes care of that horizontal row. Then we're going to go down further. Now we are down on the second quantity, which means we are going in the y direction. You will see that there's three, and we actually only want two. So I'm going to type two, and now you'll see that looks good. And uh, that distance here, six, well, if you look uh, over on our drawing, that's actually eight. So we're gonna change that to eight. And uh, that actually looks pretty good here. Now I'm gonna hit okay to that. And as soon as I do that, you will see that these uh, all turn black. And uh, that means that they are now uh, good to be extruded, right? Um, now, if you look over on the drawing, you will see that we have 1.8. Uh, as the height of this. So when I hit Q, remember that was to get out of the sketch and turn into the extrusion, go into 3D space, um, we get to press pull select. I can now select each of these rings. So you can select multiple rings. I'm just left clicking, selecting all of them. And again, where there's an arrow inside of fusion, you will see that I will pull. And uh, you can see we can now making uh, extrusion up. And if we went down, well, then we were, it turns red, that's a cut. So now I can actually type in here 1.8 uh, and hit enter, and that will give us um, that will give us those blocks. And <laughs> now it actually starts looking uh, very much like a, a Lego piece. Now again, if you want to spin around, um, hold down the middle mouse button and the shift key, um, and that will make it spin around. Just the middle mouse button will pan, and then uh, spinning in and out will give us uh, the zoom in. Now, the next thing we're going to concentrate on, we we're, almost, we're almost there, um, is um, I told, told you that I want to show you a couple of different patterns. Now, one of the things that is missing on this drawing is that each of these bosses is actually hollowed out from uh, the inside. So it's not flat in the bottom. You see we have three rings. We're going to create these three rings. But there is actually also in here um, a little bit of uh, an indent uh, on the opposite side of these uh, eight bosses. And, and the reason for that is, uh, well, there's probably a couple of reasons. One is, uh, and this is just, you know, plastic injection molding uh, that you always want to try to have unified space. If you don't have unified space when you uh, plastic injection mold, then you start playing around with, with shrink factors and you can actually get like different weld marks and suction marks and stuff like that. That is probably the main reason they're using it. The other thing, of course, is the more material you can remove, um, you know, the less plastic you gotta use and the more, more money you make. Uh, so what we're gonna do is we're gonna create an indent inside of these uh, eight bosses. But we're actually gonna start from, from the back here and, and make that indent. I actually have it, I think I have it on the Lego piece here. You can see these indents here uh, drawn in here. Uh, 
So the way we're going to do that is we're going to create another sketch. Again, same pattern, new sketch. We're going to select in, on the inside of this box here. Um, so that looks all good. Now, um, but I don't really want to go through this whole process we did before. I'm lazy. <laughs> uh, we did before with, with drawing with our mentions. There's another tool in here, and that is P, P for project. If I click on that, we get this project up here. And if I hover over, you can suddenly see that it's almost like Fusion can look through and see those bosses on the other side. And if I select on this one right here, left click once, I'm actually uh, borrowing that boss, I'm, I'm projecting that edge into, into here. And that will let me use this as a reference when I'm now gonna draw up. So I'm gonna hit okay to this. And then I'm gonna go back into the circle command, C for circle. And now I have this, this part to know exactly where I'm gonna draw my circle. And this circle is gonna be 2.6, hit enter. Um, and that circle is fully defined because it's tied into kind of that a boundary or that edge that I projected from this upper boss hip. So this is a pretty little neat tool to have that projector, that P command uh, to, your, to your advantage. Now I'm gonna go ahead here and, uh, and press pull here and hit Q for press pull and select that inner circle. Again, we get an arrow. We can pull out, we're making a solid. We can pull the other way, we're making a cut. And actually, if we go too far, well, then we are, we're cutting right in through the part and we don't want that. And then it's, I don't know, some knockoff of a real Lego block. But I actually want this, um, this in here. And I could do the same technique we did before, right? I could do like the math calculation where we said, you know, 1.8 minus uh, 1.2, and that will give me that. Um, but another thing I wanna make sure that you're aware of is, there is a lot of options inside of this standard extrude command. And I know that if you're brand new, if you're brand new to Fusion, this is a, this is a little overwhelming, right? Uh, in the beginning, kind of like starting out, um, learning all this stuff and I don't want to overwhelm you but I tell you one thing that if you get a little bit familiar in the beginning with what is inside uh, of these commands on the simple extrude you in my opinion would actually be way ahead of uh, of a lot of other people uh, using uh, fusion so the one we're dragging when we're just dragging here Oops, dragging through here. That is the distance extent, okay? So that will activate the distance length. Well, if I hit this drop down box, there is actually a uh, two object. And if I click on that, and then I select that top face, I actually get an option to place an offset. Now, right now it's zero, which means it's kind of like the hole is right at the top. But if I type in 1.2, minus 1.2, see how I'm going the wrong way. Then um, we have actually offset this cut through to that top by that 1.2, okay? So that was found on this object and go in and select that top face and then applying an offset. And we have now actually created, uh, kind of hollowed out uh, that section. So knowing what is inside of this extrude command can be extremely, extremely helpful. Again, you will see down at the bottom here how we get that history tree created. We can always go back in, right click, we can edit a feature, and we're kind of back in, in the game where we were. So before I showed you how to use uh, the sketch uh, rectangular patterns, we're inside a sketch. Now I wanna show you how to use uh, the pattern uh, in here. So what is different in here is that we actually gonna select the faces of this hole. You see again, we start from the top. And instead of selecting a sketch geometry, I'm gonna select the bottom of the hole, and I'm gonna select the circle edge of the hole. And then I can actually go ahead and use the same kind of pattern before. So it's gonna look for direction. Now in this case here, I don't get arrows, but I can select an edge, and then I actually get the, then I kind of get the arrows. Um, and you'll see kind of the same thing as we as we had before. I like to change this to spacing, and uh, we need a four to go uh, in the horizontal 
uh, horizontal line. So we get four there. The distance, yep, that was eight. Uh, and then in the y direction, we only needed two, and that uh, that was also was also eight. Uh, this is kind of two different ways to get this. Now, what you will see happening is that when I hit OK now, we get these. You will see that I now have a different symbol in here. And that is probably uh, the biggest difference between these two rectangular patterns is that when we did it in the beginning um, with our top bosses, right? And if we click on those, you can see that that was this sketch here. Uh, that pattern resided inside of the sketch. If I click here, you will actually see that I get a little pattern symbol right here. If I uh, double click on that, it will actually open up that dialog box. I tell you what, many, um, many CAD ninjas don't even know this little trick. But if you do a, a sketch pattern, you can actually double click here and it will open up the, this in here where when we did it now with this indent in the bottom, it, uh, it actually gave us a feature. Now we can right click on that and we can edit that of course and we're back into, into that. So just a couple of things to kind of be, be familiar with. All right, let's try to see if we can uh, kind of wrap this, this part up here. I uh, don't want to go too far over, over the hour here. Um, so let's uh, talk about these, um, these three uh, rings that are inside of the center here. So to model those up, I'm going to start another sketch. And these are on the back side here. So I'm going to open a new sketch. Again, just like we've been doing from the beginning. Select this bottom face. And it goes uh, normal too. Now here, I'm kind of going back to what I talked about before. That I will normally always follow uh, the drawing I get from the customer. Um, and the reason for that is, um, for example, this hole here, I am pretty dang sure that that hole has to be on the same place my origin is right in the center. Wouldn't you agree? I think you would. Um, but notice the way the customer has dimensioned this part. They actually, they could have drawn kind of like a crosshair in here showing us that that's the center. Instead, they have decided to dimension the holes from the edge. And uh, that could be important in case that they decided to change some of the dimensions like the 31.8, this could actually knock these out of being out of alignment. Now, again, pretty sure everybody here on the call uh, knows uh, Legos and knows that this one probably will always be in the center. But my point is that when the customer gonna call you up on a Friday afternoon, 4.30 and you're on your way out to catch your, your kid's soccer game uh, and they're saying, oh yeah, we're gonna move uh, this 7.9 here to be 8.9. Uh, the last thing you wanna do is have to go in and, and do all different kinds of changes to your model because you decided that, or you made the assumption that it has to be right on the audience. So I will follow that. That's just best practice, I think. So I'm actually gonna hit C for circle again, so I get this circle here. And many times when I draw up inside of Fusion, I actually don't try to be too accurate with my stuff. So in this case here, I'm just gonna draw a circle here. I'm gonna draw another circle over here and another circle over here, right? So three, these three circles, um, these three circles here are now a kind of aligned. However, I just made a mistake. Uh, and you maybe didn't catch it if you're new. When I placed this last circle, I actually by accident hit this reference line right here, and you will see how I get a weird symbol. You see that weird symbol right there next to my mouse? Uh, that, if you're looking over here in the constraints, are actually a tangent uh, relationship. So what I did by mistake was I made this circle tangent to this circle, and that's actually not, uh, gonna help me. The easiest way to get out of this is honestly just to hit escape to get out. I'm just gonna click on the circle. I'm gonna hit the lead on my keyboard and delete it out again and hit C for circle and place another circle. Make sure I don't snap in to that one like I did uh, there. That could have screwed me up uh, later on. All right, so I now have three circles placed in here, um, but now I'm actually gonna start tying them down with dimensions um, and, 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 and kind of 
place them in, in, in place. So let's do the dimension first, because that's actually what I do. Let's say that we're going to start with the outer dimension. We're actually going to have a circle inside of these. But for now, I'm going to hit D for dimension. And I'm going to place one dimension here. And that's going to be five, uh, 6.5. 6.5, hit enter. So now we know this dimension is placed. Now, looking at this drawing, you will see the two other ones are same diameter. We could go and place two more dimensions, um, but to make our life easier, I'm actually gonna use these constraints that you just saw me using on the tangency before. And I'm actually gonna use the equal, see it says equal, equal constraint. And what the equal constraint will let me do is if I click on this circle and on this circle, I get this little equal sign, and this just made these two circles equal. What means if I go over and click on this line and this line, now they are also equal. And what I've just done is I have made that if I change this dimension, the two other ones will update uh, with that dimension. So this was kind of like these constraints do. Uh, it's a good way to kind of tie things down. Now I've done that. I'm gonna come back to these constraints in, in a second. Now I'm actually going to go over and look at these dimensions on the drawing and place the first one. So 7.9. So again, on my drawing, I'm going to hit D for dimension. I'm going to place one from this edge up to the center hole here. Place the dimension over here. So 7.9 right there. And then I'm actually also going to place one from this edge to the center point here. And that is 7.9. So now you will see that I kind of use these dimensions to place this first one. And again, um, you could have said that, well, wait a minute, uh, you know, I wanted to tie this one down to this origin, but I'm actually going to follow, let these dimensions control it. Now, one thing uh, that is not provided here, but we're going to assume is that they're all in the same line. And you can see right now they're not lined in. So I'm actually going to use uh, a, ver a horizontal constraint here. So I'm going to click on that. So like this center point and this center point, and you will see that that moved that one down. I can do the same thing again. I'm leaving this center point and this center point, and now they are uh, on the same line. If I hit escape to get out, get my white mouse cursor, I hold down the center, I can drag them side to side. I can't drag it up, only side to side. The same thing with this one, because I now have that horizontal constraint. These two circles are horizontal to this circle. And now I'm going to place the last two dimensions, what is eight. And uh, I'm going to hit D for dimension. And again, D here and to here. And uh, I'm going to type in eight there. And again, because of the way my drawing is, type here to here. I'm going to place the second one uh, to, be, to be eight. So I'm following the drawing over here, even though the geologic might have said that I would have drawn this one up here on the center and then just have done the eight by eight. But again, if the customer ever called to change that 7.9, I prefer that that is driving it. But so an example is if I made this five, you will now see that everything's kind of following here. Uh, we know that this would probably not be right, <laughs> but, um, but that's what the customer asked for. So that's how I normally like to draw it up. Um, not that I wouldn't, if the customer called up and said, hey, change that to five, I would probably tell the customer, um, are you sure? But um, just to make my life easier, that's what I normally do. Okay, we need the inner circles. Now, uh, we do have an offset command in here. I could hit O for offset and select uh, this circle, and I could offset that in a certain distance. But just again, because we have a dimension for that specific one, it's not an offset, uh, I will actually, again, prefer to hit C on my keyboard and make sure I snap into the center point. And I'm just going to place uh, three circles here. Again, I don't care too much about the dimension. Hit D for dimension, place a dimension on this first circle here. Make that the 48 and then I will use that equal command again. Just I'm following kind of the dimensions on the drawing. Um, if I had to do this myself, I might do it different. But again, the customer, you know, the customer normally pays you uh, for this. So we'll do it like that. Now this is fully defined and we're ready to extrude it. So again, that is Q for press pull. Our model kind of like moves a little bit here. Uh, whoops. Uh, Q press pull. And um, 
Now I can select these rings and, uh, and pull the arrow and draw them up. Now, again, it actually doesn't show us how tall they are, but I'm pretty sure uh, on a Lego that they will go up to this uh, place right here. And actually, if I just select on this point, on this corner right here, see how it kind of get highlights? That will actually uh, create that uh, relationship. And I hit OK. Uh, and we placed uh, that there. And that will actually pretty much um, finishing our Lego block. One last thing though I gotta show you, uh, and that is that um, I'm pretty sure that on the original Lego blocks there is a web uh, on the center here. And I wanna show you a little trick to do that because again, I talked about before that we have like shell commands on how we can we can cut things. Uh, we can cut things out. Uh, we actually also have other tools in here. So there's something called a web tool uh, that uh, could be used for that. To show you that, I'm going to start another sketch. See, everything is the same kind of order. Uh, select that uh, sketch here. I'm going to draw on that edge right here. Click on that, and I'm actually just going to draw two lines. You see, the line tool is up here. I'm going to left click on that. I'm going to make sure it snaps in to the midpoint. See how I get a triangle? That means it's the midpoint. I'm just going to draw a line down. Now this line right now is perpendicular going down. You can show it as 90 degrees. I'm just going to move it down until it snaps into that ring. So now I kind of like have a line going down there. However, you'll see it's blue and that should give you a warning sign. If you see that something is blue, something is not right. To get out of this, I'm going to Get out of the line command for a second. And the easiest way when you have something that is blue is actually grab a point, hold down your, oops, grab a point, hold down your left mouse button, start dragging it. And see, it was 90 degrees, but I didn't get it locked down. Uh, so that's actually not too cool here. Uh, one thing I could do is using the vertical constraint, and then you will see that now it is black. So, different ways to do this. Let's do one in the other end too. So I'm gonna hit the line command again. Make sure I snap into the midpoint there, drag down, um, and again, you could just draw over here. And if I wanted to lock it in, um, all I really have to do is hit the tab key on my keyboard, and now you will see that the blue is my degrees. I would type 90 and hit enter, um, and that will uh, that will lock it down too. So, and they will actually place a dimension on it, hit key for dimension, uh, but that will, snap it into to place that a couple of different ways all right i don't want to dwell too much on these lines uh what i'm looking to show you is with these two lines drawn let me just hold down the shift key and spin it around see how these two now make these lines gotta be up in the air you could not draw this down on this face they have to be up here uh, because what the uh web tool will do is it will let me select the two lines it will let me add some kind of a thickness. And I think I'm just going to do that 1.2 we've been using all the time. And then you will see that just by adding those two things in, it actually created those webs. And that is why, and this might be a little confusing, but that is why I had to draw the lines up in the air, up on this shelf and not down at the bottom. It's because this web tool will project down till it actually meets something. And it met this face down here. Maybe a little confusing, but uh, at least now you know there's a web tool in here to do that. Hit OK. And um, that is pretty much um, our Lego piece here uh, to, to draw this up. Now I'm going to do uh, two la three last things here before we, we, uh, we, wrap, we wrap it up. Uh, I just have to, uh, to round the edges up here on top. Uh, so you can go and you can do a fillet. Um, and I can select um, the different uh, the different edges in here. Whoops! I select a fillet. Um, spin around. Oops! Oh, my mouse is a little funky tonight. Uh, and I can select um, these edges. Select all these edges on the top here. And, uh, and, that, and then I can type in a radius. I can either, well, I could actually drag in the arrow. You see how we get kind of like a radius in there. Um, I'm gonna, that's probably a big radius. 0.1 maybe, 
that's probably a good radius. Um, so be a, and, and that's normally a good practice to put these fillets in at the end. The same thing goes with uh, any kind of chamfer. Um, anybody knows who ever stepped on a Lego block that they are not very well chamfered. <laughs> Uh, but at least uh, <laughs> they will step them on all those suckers. Uh, but at least we know that um, that they uh, that the edges are a little bit broken because if not, then we would actually cut ourselves on them. And I'm gonna select all these. Uh, I'm just gonna select all these edges right here. And you can actually select um, through. I can actually hover over here. I should be able to select that back edge right there. Um, place it there. Maybe also on the bottom edge. Now where we add it, uh, and just give that just an edge break. Not much, but enough if you zoom in, we can actually see that we do have a little bit of an edge break on there. Uh, and the last thing I like to do uh, on these uh, models here, we're done with this drawing for right now. So expand this up. Um, what I like to do with these is I like to right click, go into appearances, and uh, and change this. So if we go in, there's a plastic down here. Click on that, go into a peg, scroll down so you'll find the red one, drag it over and let go, and uh, close it out. And the, that uh, there should be uh, somewhat a decent uh, attempt on a, uh, on a Lego piece like this. Uh, what I will do in the end is I will click save and give it a name so we can call it the Facebook um, Lego piece. Yes, this is the Facebook live stream, right? Uh, so, uh, so we got that one there, and uh, and hopefully um, we hit save and we've saved that part, uh, and that should now live. If we hit the tree here, then we have that one showing up right there. Facebook Lego. Um, so I hope that this uh, was useful, kind of like going through these uh, basic steps, and that's really. Uh, what I like to do on these uh, Facebook live streams. I know that uh, we haven't had uh, one of these in a while. I also know that next week I'm not going to be able to. Uh, I'm not going to be able to do one because I'm going to be out of town. Uh, but that is uh, that is kind of like how how life changes. I hope this uh, was useful. Again, I really would love to uh, to read some of your comments. But again, uh, I haven't got that set up with my new setup. I'm sorry. I'll I'll try to get to it. Um, I hope this was useful. If nothing else, these uh, live streams here, these absolute beginners, give you a chance to kind of like dial back, right? And when you get overwhelmed, uh, and I don't blame anybody for getting overwhelmed uh, when you're learning uh, Fusion 360, uh, this is a good way to kind of like come back, watch one of these, and then you should hopefully uh, be good uh, to go. That's it, folks. Uh, hope this was useful. Hope this adds a little bit more value uh, to your Fusion 360 uh, experience. I will make sure that this video is also getting available up on the YouTube channel uh, over over the weekend. So if you missed it, uh, then um, you maybe catch it up there. I really appreciate it, folks. Again, I'm sorry that I'm not going to dive into the comments uh, here on the live stream. Uh, that was kind of like what I wanted to do, but until I get that set up, hope you have an awesome evening and uh, we'll be back, try to be back in a couple of weeks uh, with these